Программа «Народная трибуна». Открытый микрофон для всех, кто желает высказать свое мнение. Свое мнение. Телефон прямого эфира 847-400-5200. Здравствуйте. Я имею что сказать. А я думаю, что... Кричать не обязательно. Работают все микрофоны. Все микрофоны. Каждый может... Итак, уважаемые дамы и господа, в эфире «Народная трибуна». Сегодня я и ведущий Анатолий Червец, со мной в студии наш уже, скажем так, постоянный гость, человек, которого мы очень хорошо знаем. Это полковник спецназа американской армии, это кандидат в... Конгресс Соединенных Штатов Америки от 9 округа Саргиз Сангари. Well, I mentioned that you spent quite a while uh, with U.S. Army, so happy Veterans Day to you, and thank you for your service. Thank uh, you. It Sorry. really is very, very important day. I mean, it really is, because um, regardless of whether it's veterans of World War II, whether it's any other wars as recent as war in Iraq, they're all veterans that sacrifice their lives and uh, everything is just so we can sleep normally at night I guess so we don't have to worry about mm, situation um, that a lot of people were caught in during the uh, uh, especially World War two anyway so the elections are over and um, I mean, we know what happened, but you tell us, what, are you, what is your perspective on that? Well, uh, 3 November is over, so that was the day the elections uh, took place uh, in a long road for us. Um, we did good on our numbers. They're still coming in. Nothing's been certified yet. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to go through a certification process. It's probably going to happen until December. 14th. Um, yeah, 14th. So, I mean... Our numbers still are rising. We're, um, we're at 90,000 plus, 92,000. You uh, guys did really good, actually. I mean, yeah, for the know, money, honestly. for the money that we invested, to be honest. I mean, yeah. we had some money out there, um, you know, 43,000 looks like what we got in donations. We put 11,000 mm -hmm. out of our own pockets into it. We did have some other helps that we call in kind donations. I know that uh, uh, very special thanks to Felix uh, Frederick Berg. For uh, for actually helping us to be on these programs, so we could talk to to folks again. Um, he's the one who sponsored, uh, you know, helped with some of the sponsor of the program. So я считаю это очень важно перевести. Сергей благодарит Феликса Фридберга за ту поддержку, которую он предложил нашим кандидатам и спонсировал их выступление у нас на радио, и вообще, э, Феликс, спасибо вам огромное, это действительно очень важно, э, поэтому э, спасибо огромное. So the numbers are growing, and they will continue. We're probably going to get to uh, maybe 100,000, uh, mm -hmm. is what we're estimating. That's pretty good. When you, look, when you take on the machine, right. the democratic machine, I wanted people to know this. People are always afraid to get into these fights and say, these are not things you need to be afraid of. You go in and you hit them hard. And under COVID, under restrictions, we hit this machine hard. And almost 100,000 people said, we don't agree with the policies of the current congresswoman and where we want to be. So you could build on this. This is something you, this is a strong base. You know, mm -hmm. this is something that people recognize. And we didn't talk to any special interest. Uh, right. Majority of the congressional races 
spend in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Uh, right. Third congressional race, I think, was $3 million maybe spent in there. We'll know what the final numbers look like. But, I mean, you've had millions of dollars that were poured into some of these races, and our numbers are equivalent to them. Because if you get a good candidate and you can reach out to the people, people like it. Uh, and mm-hmm. you can build a coalition with the ethnic communities, immigrant communities, who really knew what's happening, and you right. can see the fight in the, our country today. They really care. About yeah, they, they care. You know, you're either going to go socialism mm-hmm. or you're going to go capital. Yes. You've got to choose one of the two. Uh, and even within the Democratic Party right now, there's a major fight as to how they want to, you know, sort themselves out for, for the better term. So uh, it is in the process, as you know. So when you say 100,000, are you talking about just in the uh, ninth Congressional I'm District? I'm talking about just in my district, the people okay. who voted for me. So in all right. fairness, that's what I want to bring up. In all fairness, if it's 100,000 just in the ninth District, plus the 10th district, plus all these districts where uh, Republicans actually took a great number of um, votes, it really does stand for something. I mean, we can't say that, yeah, yeah, oh, there is no Republicans in the state, nobody cares about the Republican Party, nobody cares about... It. I mean, there is a huge amount of people that do vote Republican. It's just we... Yet to uh, beat that democratic machine. Yeah, it, well, I mean, that's what it's called, right? You're not running against a point, you're running against a machine. But when you can bloody the machine by 100,000 votes in oh, the yeah. 9th Congressional District, which is a heart of the machine, you're really done a number. So we're looking for Illinois right now. Overall, Illinois is looking at almost 54,730 votes that have switched. Wow. Uh, that are no longer counted on those mail-in ballots that went out that are going towards a Trump requirement, you know, so right, they got dumped. Right. I think Trump is looking somewhere between 4% loss overall in Illinois to, that's that's a close percentage, you know. It is, people yeah, think 4%. That Illinois is, a, is, a, is a blue state. It's not. Uh, Illinois is, a, you know, majority of it, if you look at it, is a red state everywhere, except for the machine politics. Except for the Cook County. For, uh, Cook County. So, yeah. Um, there's going to be a redistricting of mm-hmm. the districts. So what look like what is today's the ninth congressional district in May, we'll know if it looks like that or is it going to be completely different. More likely it's going to be different. Based uh, on the recent census. Uh, 2010 census, and depending on what happens internally, there's a fight between uh, the House Speaker Madigan mm-hmm. and the governor because, of course, it's tax and impasse, which God bless Thank God that fair tax did hey. not pass out of us. Yes, been yes, yes. A worse, <laughs> worse position. Um, uh, they're fighting. Madigan wants to redraw it the way he would like to, but the governor might bring a third party in to maybe give it a more of a fair draw. Mm-hmm. However it does, uh, the it is it is possible that some folks that are sitting in the tent today may actually all the Cook County fall into a future ninth. And right. night might look different, but these are all in discussion. We'll find out what it looks like in May once they they rule on it. We still don't know who the president is going to be at the end of the day. Exactly. That's I know we have a president elect, but yes. it still has to go through the court cases. Uh, you know, Absolutely. Uh, which there's a lot of challenges, and there are some challenges that are going to be because Illinois is also part of that large uh, challenge that was put out because mm-hmm. of the fact that you have this computer programming that was used specifically uh, for these uh, uh, ballots, mail-in ballots. And right. It, we found out that it had a lot of issues in September of this. Do we have anybody working on those cases? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, is the administration currently that's fighting against it is working on those. Um, is I mean, I guess my question is, is Illinois also included? Illinois in is in the lawsuit. You might see separate lawsuits that might be filed in mm-hmm. Cook County that would maybe be tied for it, but until they go forward, uh, I do know there's some that are in the works. Like everything else, you collect information, you gather items, uh, you know, you do affidavits, and then you sure. f- move forward with filing, but that will come from the district attorney here. But however, in the overall federal case, yes, Illinois is part of that mm-hmm. federal link as far as the uh, what they had on their corruption requirements 
but uh, so it's going to be still uh, we'll find out because it, uh, you're not going to get a certification from the various states until probably sometime i think december well december uh, 14 is 14. their date <coughs> i mean yes. that's a the what do you call it, the final date correct the, it has to be certified anytime before that so. and that's all that matters i mean news yeah. news uh, programs can come out and make declarations like uh dick durbin uh declared himself a winner with one person of the vote being shown right uh, the question was how do you know that you're gonna win dick durbin yeah. if there's only one person on the vote being shown so yeah. those are the things that kind of trigger people looking into issues. Um, well, I think, yeah. honestly, in my opinion, it should be prohibited somehow by federal law for anybody but a electoral, electoral college to actually announce the winners and uh, certify the votes. It should be prohibited because, I mean, I don't care about who you are as far as the uh, uh, mass media, but you should not, either that or you should be you should be reading a disclaimer saying this is just a certain prediction, it is not the actual result, because it is very confusing to a lot of people. Yeah, people who don't know American politics, really, it's uh, when the delegates get together and then when they s the certification go forward, delegates are today together and say, here's the next president of the United right. States. Uh, so newspapers and media try to beat each other with, to the punch. Look, a real clear politics as we stand right now, uh, three days ago, took Biden Mm -hmm. down to 259. Why? Because uh, Pennsylvania was taken out. Right. So Pennsylvania is now up, uh, up in, a, in a fight. Actually, Trump has moved up uh, because he's taken so-called North Carolina. They gave it to him in that real clear politics in Georgia. And right. if you look at uh, newspapers or media, they'll say, well, Georgia is kind of, you know, too close to call. Well, real clear politics has called it uh, in, in the process. So there's a lot of... Well, Fox News... Yeah called the Arizona before half the votes were counted. So I don't care what kind of model you got. You cannot call these. You can't. You yeah, California was to. called before uh, one of the ma ma media outlets called California before the polls were closed. Right. So <laughs> but you could call it before the polls closed. The question right. is, how do you know this? And I think the American uh, electoral system sometimes confuses folks. Uh, even my opponent, before all the votes were counted, had uh, gone ahead and declared herself a winner. But at least she waited in the, uh, to get to the 90% of what she thought, rather right. than 1% percent what Dermot was calling his <laughs> at, <laughs> at the Senate race. But uh, I, mean, I, I think next time, if I do run, I'm gonna call. Uh, I'm gonna call my race a week before the uh, election. Well, I'm gonna say I won. But you know, uh, it just <laughs> goes to show the arrogance <laughs> of Dick Durbin. <laughs> I mean, it's time to go. I mean, when you're that arrogant, when you call yourself before with one percent of the votes, and you call yourself, that's arrogant. Well, it's not arrogant. It, it shows lack of understanding too, because what you do is, then people say, "Well, do you know something that we don't know?" And that right away, everybody starts looking at you. You know. Right. Uh, well. So <laughs> if you were to say, "Hey, look at me." <laughs> Guess what? Illinois now gets tossed into that uh, lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, maybe if he hadn't uh, jumped out, uh, you know, uh, Illinois would not have been, uh, you know, put into that lawsuit process. But there's a lot of uh, there's a Illinois lot. Illinois is land of lawsuits. Come on. You, you, well, you're gonna see. You're gonna see some of these cases coming down, and some of right. them are very valid um, on 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 the issues. And then we'll see what the administration does. Really, it's it's gonna go through a legal process. You kind of compressed. Right. Uh, how you go through this legal process. Uh, yeah, but you mentioned uh, uh, state or district attorney, and <laughs> we don't have a prayer with no, the no, district no. attorney. Well, the, these are well. Some of them look. If if you look at it at the higher level, from yeah. the, uh, the these are the Trump appointee uh, folks. Uh, they'll do a pretty decent job, depending on the district that falls into it. Uh, but. Uh, in this case, it would be the U.S. Attor attorney right. with a s particular district. But uh, because the DOJ came out and put new guidance on anyway to the bar, so th there's much more apt in collecting intel and information now. And they're in the process of gathering. And then you'll go through subpoenas. You'll 
you'll interview individuals, you'll see yeah. what happened at these counting locations. You'll have to follow lawsuits in this case and possibly Cook County because that's where, if that's where the crime has taken place, supposedly, and then you'll go through the process of the courts. And even, look, I do know that we say that uh, Illinois, you know, all the uh, court folks are basically, you know, uh, democratic, but th- they're pretty decent as far as when it comes to understanding. You got to go through the process of um, of going through, um, you know, the discovery. Mm-hmm. And in the discovery, everything is open. So people want to stay. It's funny, you know, once they raise their hand and they sit in for that federal prosecutor. Oh yeah, once they realize, under oath, all of a sudden, yeah. it's yeah. like, whoa. Well, so they realize, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have done what I thought would, uh, was yeah. a smart thing to do. Absolutely. Um, but you know what? What blew my mind actually in at least in this election, like completely blew my mind, are two races. One's between Pat O'Brien and Kim Fox, and yeah. the other one is between Jeannie Ives and Sean Keston. I just, for the for the God of me, I cannot understand how Kim Fox would beat out Pat O'Brien. I mean, I don't care how much money she makes or she has to spend, uh, but she's an incumbent. So it's not like we're, you know, we're betting on this dark horse. No, we know exactly what she stands for. Look, uh, the problem is, again, it goes back to the whole thing. Where are these votes coming from? And I think this, this, um, these ballots that were mailed out in mass, Nevada was awful mm-hmm. at it. Everybody was getting it. Um, and the program that they're using, the program that you're using to read uh, is a program that was used in the South Korea elections and Ukraine elections. For right. for, for, and uh, in both cases, uh, there were glitches in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now the program itself will, is uh, the the Dominion program is a program that initially came out of the Clinton Foundation in support of promoting democracies overseas. So you get a software gl- that is glitching is really a Clinton Foundation software. Yeah, but uh, it's glitching only yeah. certain way though, certain direction. Well, they had a briefing on it. They had a briefing actually. I uh, uh, have the briefing in front of me. The briefing was from the. Uh, uh, given in September 24, 2020, with the Center of Security Policy. And the problem here is when they briefed, they said, listen, uh, like in South Korea, because I was there doing an assessment in December of last year, we knew something was wrong. We wanted to know how's it possible Moon's going to win an election. Well, Moon right. won an election, yeah. overwhelmingly. And they realized when they did the study that there's a million and a half votes out there that were part of supposedly this glitched uh, programming. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's uh, really tied to the mail-in ballots that went there, too. So when they briefed it in D.C. in September of last year, the Federal Election Commission was supposed to take certain steps to alleviate some of these issues. Well, guess what? No. Nothing has happened. Yeah, Again, absolutely. we go back to the bureaucracies. And for us, the problem we have in uh, Illinois and our worry is and we want to make sure that at least the process is cleaned up to make sure that if there's an audit that uh, audit should take place to make sure everything's accounted for correctly is because look th- they signed a contract for a 10-year contract for mm-hmm. this program so if you have a program that is flawed it's va- it fails certain requirements um, as an example if i get five votes one gets dropped or mm-hmm. out of those five votes to go to my you know opponent right uh, yeah. and it's been shown that you could actually program it to allow that to happen uh, if if you don't manage it or maintain it secured well, um, then you end up in a case where right now, of course, is uh, the redrawing of the district because census year. So you bought a program that is going to take you to the next census. And if it's ever going to be like this, then people are going to say, well, why am I going to run in Illinois? Because they won't have a, right. you know, they'll be but uncomfortable because they can say, if I'm going to run, kill myself, and then you're going to have a program that is a single source contract rather than multiple contracts being looked at, something that the FEC has in the Federal Election Commission has fixed, and you want me to run to do what? At the end, for a glitch program to be able to uh, take and uh, give uh, basically votes to the other guy. So I think this is where we have to work yeah, on the, the fairness is, of the... Who's supposed to be looking into it? Who? <laughs> it's, Republicans it, yeah. are not looking into it. Well, I mean... So who's I, looking I, into Again, it? it goes back to... 
the Federal Election Commission yeah. was supposed to be the main controller, but you have to have both parties to have right. so said, at take a look at it. This we is know the that the Election Commission, the Federal Election Commission, doesn't want any part of oversight. They yeah. just don't. So now, <coughs> why? Because, again, because it's going in a certain direction. Now, if it was going Republican direction, yeah, we'd be standing on our heads now looking to under every little nook and cranny. But, so, in order for this to, it's it's kind of, I'm just trying to understand the puzzle. In order for this to work, <coughs> two parties have to be involved. But it seems like they got to work together. They cannot be fighting each other constantly. When you fight each other, look, a at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how the election goes. I mean, we look bad to, um, you look bad when you just show the ineptitude of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you get people, you know, a, a, we knew corruption is always there. Corruption will be there. Human right. beings, your uh, human beings are corrupt, okay? Right. Even if they're not. I, if I put a uh, bowl of chips here in front mm -hmm. of you, even if you're not a person who likes to eat chips, you'll reach in there and then we'll eat. Absolutely, it's, just, it's there. <laughs> it's, you put it in front of me, I'm going to eat Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So the problem is with corruption is the same, but in the past it was not as open as you might see maybe you know times have changed but even regardless of how the election ends up what happens if president trump the current POTUS stays in or uh, biden you know comes in it just it doesn't help us as a nation when we do not fix these problems and some of them are corruption some are, are bureaucratic uh, mishaps some are because of how the bureaucracy established. And bureaucracies are stupid. They don't work well, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why big government doesn't do anything to, to help you out in, at the end. Uh, so, um, with that... Well, see, previously, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but previously, <coughs> it was almost predictable, the next party in power. You know, if you go all the way back to whatever, you know, go to uh, Carter and then Reagan... And then yeah. somehow Bush got that one term in, and then we got Clinton, then we got another Bush, then we got Obama. Yeah. So we're, you know, alternating. But now... The pendulum will come back and forth. Right. Come back but and forth. now there's real quest for power on the part of the Democratic Party. And it seems like that quest for power is ruling everything that is going on otherwise. Well, the, the, if the quest will become a single party rule right. and if you do that you destroy the two party balance yes the problem becomes when you do that you become a single party and once you have a single party you have a dictatorship regardless of how it right. is so right. uh, and if you break that system that mechanism of the two parties that you had mm -hmm. then you you have you literally have to restructure everything and i don't think you want to get there i think that's where the issue is the worry is that you know you can have people that will come in and radically change how our governmental system is. Mm -hmm. uh, look, if you I imagine, you know, you run in Illinois and you run and you lose. You run, you lose. You right. run, you lose. You run, you lose. It really becomes a single party. And if you take Illinois and you duplicate it over the entire country, mm -hmm. then you can have one party always going to push, but will lose, and the main party will hold everything. Uh, to include if uh, you go in and now somehow, because, and, you know, I've been told, well, if the Senate is controlled by Republicans, there's going to be a pushback against the radicals who want to mm -hmm. add two more states in. Uh, you know, senators will cop deals. They'll make of deals course. with even the other Not side. Not only that, <laughs> you know. If we have two new senators... Well, you can have four. If you add in two new states, you can have four. And those are constantly going to be Democratic No, no, I'm talking about even today, we, uh, won, senators. we hold the Senate. Yeah. For example, let's say we win the Georgia, Georgia both uh, runoffs, we hold the Senate. But we got two more senators on to the, because we lost a couple, and we got two new ones on. Okay? Now, my point is, <coughs> where is the guarantee that those two are going to run with the Republican Party not going to become Flakes, not going to become uh, McCain's, not going to become Romney's, not going to become Murkowski's. There is no... Then, so having two, three votes um, advantage 
really is not that N much guarantee. No, it's not because look, I'll give you an example. Bernie Sanders uh, has ran for presidency. He's loved right. by a lot of people across the country who like his ideas. But Bernie Sanders has not been able to take his ideas and operationalize them in the Senate. Right. So he's begging to see somebody from his party become the president so he can be put in the administration because he knows in the administration he's willing to throw all those people away. Yeah. All those people who love him and say, thank you, I'm done. Thank you for loving me. I'm in the administration. He's literally willing to throw away yes. his seat yes. in the Senate because he knows when you're in the administration, now you can affect things. Right. So those senators that might be Republicans, too, that are in, they're going to realize, well, you know what? i got to make deals with the administration if I'm going to, you know, get votes for, of course. for my particular of course. district. Now, that's part of politics, policy. But what I'm trying to say to folks so they have to understand this is that uh, it's no guarantee that if you have a Republican-held, uh, you know, Senate, that mm -hmm. that Senate – may not sign off on some exactly. you know bills yes. or requirements yes. and uh, changes that you want because i got to tell you if uh, let's say you have two republicans only that you have the majority in the senate tomorrow you see how people were out there burning and looting the streets the same people will show up at your doorstep and say you know uh, you have to allow uh, you know yeah, you're uh, done. this Move state out. and that mm -hmm. state to become uh, you know part of right. or this district and Puerto Rico because if not you're racist and then they'll be hounding you forever and then eventually they'll break you in that way possibly mm -hmm. so those are all the issues that you get to consider when you talk about this I, I like to see I still believe that a two-party system for does work, uh, but unfortunately, when you push it so far when one of the parties to the left, if it doesn't clean itself out, and I don't think you'll ever have any moderate Democrats, if you never clean it out, then you'll ne you'll be where Illinois is. Uh, well, see, that's the problem. All the old timers are gonna naturally imagine they'll out. die right. <laughs> they, they well, don't get voted out democrats don't, vo don't get rid of their I own I didn't want to be that graphic yeah, but they eventually they'll move out no th they do I mean they stay in <laughs> office until they die in the Middle East I said you know in the Middle East we would have people die in office their son and daughter would yeah. be promoted and we would have to clap for them say you know wow the next right. person in the leadership <laughs> over here over there we call them dictators queen's dead so, long live the queen yeah over here we uh, put arbol in front of their name and call them congress because Congress or senators. It, yeah. uh, it, at least in the Senate, they turn over a little bit more than they do. The, the more I look at the hearings, yeah. the more I say to myself, you know what? I mean, I, I think I could find more sane people at the nursing home than yes. there are in the Congress. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> they probably would make better decisions because they've they actually would. lived through something. They would actually <laughs> understand what you're telling them. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at Pat Leahy, and this guy does not strike me as playing with a full deck of cards. He's, what, 87, 88 years old? I mean, come on. Well, look, um, there, there comes a time Feinstein, where all, you 87? know, yeah, you know, you, you you get older, the faculties aren't so much there, the, the staffers run everything. Right, exactly. You know, and uh, unfortunately, that's, we don't want to be there. But uh, that's why I hope to see more younger uh, folks run for office. And uh, really, today's message for me was, and I know we've talked about all these issues, but it's really, I want to see, first of all, I want to thank the community uh, for absolutely doing an outstanding job of supporting thank me. Thank you. Uh, you know, I mean, we went against a juggernaut uh, of the machine, and look what we did even now. Yeah. With everything that you see is happening, we scored numbers against them that I don't think they even imagined. Oh, absolutely. To score with the amounts of dollars that we spent. I couldn't believe yeah. the numbers I was looking at, but honestly. But uh, we, we've done well, and uh, this is something we could build upon, and I want to see the younger folks come in, uh, you know, learn from what we learned, okay, yeah. uh, and work with us. There's, there's elections uh, around the corner on 6 April. We have to have folks that are running in local levels as trusteeships and right. uh, other positions are very important. And those positions are important because if the trusteeship of a certain village is uh, uh, pushing these radical agendas, mm -hmm. like, you know, you have to wear a mask from the time you get out of your house to <laughs> getting to your car. 
Yeah. Uh, and the, the poor mayor has to deal with that constantly. With those or pressures. Second Amendment yeah. issues. So you're putting all these pressures on them, you right. know. Uh, even the uh, Illinois, take a look at some of the stuff that was on the ballots and what what went through to include so-called assault weapons. Yeah. Uh, they, sh- they don't know what an assault weapon is. You know, they put assault weapon. Guy just checks, yes, we should have more restrictions on them. You don't understand what you're doing in Cook County. Go take a look at some of the stuff that got passed. Yep. And it gets executed at the trustee levels. On November 2nd, I was knocking on the door on the eve of the election uh, in Skokie Village Hall, and I knew that they were going to pass a resolution that has a certain amount of money. If mm-hmm. you steal, you just get a ticket uh, from Skokie businesses or even residents. And I said, at least do us a favor, delay it. And I wrote, hand wrote my complain i couldn't get in there i said delay it until uh you know we get through this election process right, uh, right. uh for your next board meeting uh because it's it these this is where you have to make some changes you know so you know what let us let us cut away here uh, we're gonna go to a commercial break and then we come back Итак, уважаемые дамы и господа, мы возвращаемся на Народную трибуну. Сегодня в студии я, Анатолий Червец. Со мной вместе кандидат э, от Республиканской партии э, в Конгресс Соединенных Штатов, Саргиз Сангарь. Hello once again. And uh, Саргиз пришел э, с э, таким довольно важным сообщением, поэтому, пожалуйста, послушайте. А я э, дам возможность ему сделать это сообщение, ну а потом мы продолжим разговор. Uh, go ahead. I, I just announced that you have a message for our listeners, so please, your. No, my message to our listeners is that uh, uh, it's been a wonderful campaign. Um, this campaign doesn't end on 3 November. Uh, what we start together, we move forward together. My whole entire plan was to build a team and to see what we could do as far as uh, hopefully, you know, changing uh, the systems here, especially in the 9th Congressional District, and we've done a wonderful job. Uh, uh, my uh, my daughter uh, said, uh, Dad, uh, are you sad that uh, your numbers aren't, you know, what they should be? I said, no. I said, because, look, you have to get in the race. Imagine if I had gotten in. Those 100,000 people that voted for me, or would end up voting for me at the end of after we certify everything, would not have had an opportunity to choose somebody else. Mm -hmm. I said, so this actually helps, forces folks to realize that, you know what, Um, you're missing a large portion of the electorate that you're not listening to. You got to get out of your echo chamber. So it does force changes. It will definitely force a change to what the 9th Congressional District will look like. Uh, but uh, we're we're a team. We came together through this, and we're going to move forward through this, and we're going to be in a position uh, to do what we can to help ourselves in the long run. Uh, you know, there's still future elections. There's uh, there's uh, immediate ones in January, and future ones two years down the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're not that far off, and we don't even know how to this uh, this election is going to turn out yet. So I want to thank everybody who voted specifically. Uh, God bless you for voting. Um, I want to thank everybody who supported us. I want to thank everybody who put yard signs in their yard uh, for us. I want to thank everybody who actually did whatever they could. We had individuals who were not even citizens, but they were brand new to the country, and they did whatever they could to get the message out to their friends about uh, our race and uh, the importance of why we should be voted in. And uh, that helped a lot of folks on the undercards. Across the board, it has uh, uh, given us a new life, and I've had individuals who hadn't voted in 37 years in this country mm-hmm. and voted for the first time for me. I had 20,000 voters for the first time they ever cast their ballot. They wow, cast that's it awesome. for me in a democratically held uh, state that's been under at least Cook County for 75 years and the control of Democrats. So we have made enormous changes. We've kicked the door down. And that we're moving through that breach, as we say. So, um, God bless you for everything you did. Thank you for getting me to this point. I was just a guy in the suit. I was there to represent you as we move forward. And we are going to still continue to build on this. So, if you want to help us to build on this coalition, you can still reach out to us on www.votesingary.com. www.votesingary.com. Text us, send us uh, your 
uh, email information, and, uh, you know, this is not over yet. So we continue to move forward. Let me translate this because it's a really important uh, message. Итак, дорогие друзья, для тех, кто, может быть, не понял или не успел проследить за тем, что говорил наш гость, на, Во-первых, наш гость от всего сердца поблагодарил всех тех, которые его поддержали, которые за него проголосовали, особенно в девятом э, округе, э, поблагодарил э, за ту финансовую поддержку, за моральную поддержку. И э, ну, вот такая приятная очень новость. Э, в этот раз за нашего гостя проголосовали 20 тысяч людей, которые никогда в жизни до этого не голосовали, хотя жили здесь, имели право голоса, но вот так получилось, что мы действительно, наверное, как-то разбудили в этих людях желание голосовать, желание что-то изменить, поэтому наш гость с удовольствием э, баллотировался от нашего округа, еще раз спасибо огромное, дай Бог вам здоровья и на этом выборы не заканчиваются, потому что у нас еще будут выборы в январе, в апреле, в местные э, точки власти. Ну и через два года будут опять же промежуточные выборы. По поэтому, э, если у вас есть какие-то вопросы, держите связь с офисом э, нашего гостя э, www.votesangari www.votesangari.com Пожалуйста, выходите на веб-сайт, смотрите информацию, подписывайтесь, регистрируйтесь и будем готовиться к следующим выборам, потому что господин Сангари еще не собирается складывать, как говорится, оружие, будет бороться, ну и, конечно же, представлять вас. Так что всем огромное спасибо. Uh, I also want to add one more thing. I know that uh, you guys have been feeling a lot of phone calls of individuals calling in and saying that there were some irregularities that mm -hmm. they wanted to report. If they want to do that, there's also the Trump campaign has established a website and a hotline for those voters mm -hmm. and for those irregularities I've never report. And they could go to a hotline is 888-630-1776. Just like the year 888-630-1776. And then um, I have also passed on a website uh, that uh, they had uh, requested here. So um, I'm sure that that should help them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we'll see where we end up uh, with uh, all the votes being counted at the end. And uh, we're not done. We are going to come visit you guys uh, uh, in the future and I uh, sure hope so yeah. because I really I mean I, I think that uh, if we all of us if we keep in touch and if we get things rolling I mean uh, you know the people need to understand that uh, two years ago we didn't even have a Republican representative from Buffalo Grove or from the next yeah. district yep I mean period there yep. was nothing on yep. the ballot so it's very important that uh, we continue this, but let me give this information to our listeners. Дорогие друзья, если вы стали свидетелем какого-то uh, интересного происшествия где-нибудь на выборных участках, пожалуйста, есть такая hotline, которую uh, создала администрация президента Трампа. Один восемьсот. Uh, 630-1776. 1-800-630-1776. Вы можете позвонить на эту хатлайн, это, естественно, бесплатный звонок, и если вы стали свидетелем какого-то ну, подозрительного, скажем так, действия где-нибудь на избирательных участках, пожалуйста, звоните, это очень важно. Э, давайте показания, скорее, если если вы действительно стали свидетелем какого-нибудь э, непонятного э, происшествия на избирательном участке, очень важно, чтобы вы дали, не просто позвонили и рассказали, скорее всего, вам предложат э, составить своего рода протокол, подписать его, чтобы это было официально. Ну и потом, конечно же, будет идти расследование. И э, опять же, 
значит, веб-сайт нашего гостя, это www.watsangari.com. Мы, я пообещал, по крайней мере, от своего имени, я надеюсь, от вашего имени, то, что мы будем поддерживать отношения с нашим гостем, с его офисом, и, дай Бог, может быть, в следующий раз у нас получится действительно победить э, нашу соперницу Джен Чекавский. Это очень важно, очень важно. Тем более вы видите, что происходит на избирательных участках, вы видите, что происходит с э, голосами, которые, ну, вот так э, пропадают вдруг. So, uh, the message is clear. We need to keep in touch, we really do. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll still come around and... Uh, no, definitely. Look, uh, Colonel Singer doesn't turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Colonel Singer has briefed the previous administration, has briefed the current administration, and will probably brief the <laughs> following administration, who, whoever is in the administration. So uh, we don't go away. I don't go away. I'm, I can flow between administrations. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> administrations come and go. Th they come and go. But we're here. But look, <laughs> look, this is important. This is important for your community. You got to be unified. You cannot be fighting each other over Democrat or Republican. You got to get that understanding. You got to unify. You got to vote as blocks if you can. Because administrations will come and grow, go. You have to ask the question, what have they done for us? Right. <laughs> and mm -hmm. if they're not doing anything for you, then there's one key thing you got to do. You got to get your folks into these uh, positions, either in Congress or at the local levels. And I want to see the, somebody, uh, maybe a younger generation, come on and say, I want to participate. Instead of ha going through the process of learning the lessons that we have learned, we'll explain them to you. They said, this is what we learned. Mm -hmm. It's up to you what you do with it. Right. I, and if you want help, we'll help you to the best of our ability because your community helped us. Uh, and if you could get your folks into these positions in the mayor seats, everything else, it also makes our life easier. Right. You know, if of I, if, like I said, I had a mayor of Lincoln who came sat with me. He wanted help. I've been able to help him, and I will still help him even after, you know, after this race. And I've already given him links that the current congressman could have given him as far as where you could go grants and support wow. from the federal level. I mean, simple stuff. These are not difficult. So we'll work with the business community. I want to work with your business community to develop uh, the uh, strength that we need to keep ourselves. Because at the sure. end, administrations come and go. It doesn't matter. It's not about Republican, Democrats. It's about what can we do to help our community and keep our community in, in the state. And if we don't do what we can do to keep ourselves safe, our community, then uh, your kids and your daughters are going to be facing a really ugly, uh, ugly future. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, is on our necks if we pass that on to them. So uh, I'm here. I'm hoping that we hear from younger members of your community that say we want to run and come and meet with us and we will do our best to help them out. Uh, you know, to Very move interesting. Forward. Too bad I'm not any younger, but... <laughs> <laughs> you're young. You're young. Give me two parts. <laughs> no, I got enough problems on my own. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, <coughs> it's... Uh, I mean, I. you know what? It's, it's kind of interesting because it's a huge, huge Russian-speaking community. Huge. You should have a person at the table and to there's speak on your behalf. You know, I'm thinking of, in Minnesota, Ilhan Omar. Somali, right? And yet they have enough people there. I don't think they have more than what we have in Russians here. No, in you got you got a large Russian community and you have no representation. Absolutely. Colonel Singer can represent for you on your behalf, but there you go. It would be better if you have somebody from your community that could represent you. But see the you problem know? is it's so spread out. That's yeah. where the problem is. Uh, this is how important it is to on one hand to c congregate. It is important to segregate, but it's also important to congregate because this way you can vote as a block rather than be all over the place. And uh, it would be so awesome if we did have a representative. And uh, But for people that live in the 9th District, we know who to turn to. So... It's it's very important. It really is. Uh, now, question to you is this. 
so if uh, if there are people out there that live in the ninth district, uh, or not in the ninth, I mean people that are willing to maybe step a foot into those waters. Yes, they don't have to be just in my district. If they're they're somewhere else, they can reach out to us. Okay. Uh, you, the community has helped us, and I will help their the community. So Excellent. Excellent. You know, and you're still going to be on the ballot? When? <laughs> in the election, next election. <laughs> you better be. What do you mean? What are you laughing about? You remember you said uh, administrations come and go, but we're here. I will be so where my country needs me. There if you my go. country needs me to be on the ballot, I will be on the ballot. If my country needs me somewhere else, I'll be somewhere else. I will do what is important for my country and the flag behind you. Well, when so you say my country, let's start with the ninth district, <laughs> and then we can move on from there. How's that? <laughs> okay. Really I, I think it's only the, fair. Let's see what the night looks like by May. There, uh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you and Jen are going to share it. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> you never know. But, no, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming in. I really do appreciate it. And like I said, I hope we get to talk because it's, A, it's nice to be up on those things. And um, I know that we're so lazy. You know, people, they don't want to get up and get something like news. No, they want somebody to come in and feed them those news. So... That's where you come in. Vote. That's important. Yes, yes. Don't complain afterwards. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, Vote and get involved. Don't come uh, give me your, your guidance on how you're in a race 24 yeah. hours before the polls close. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> you know, that was actually, it was funny because I went, I mean, I live in the, whatever the hell district, in Lake Zurich. Uh, 16th district. I, I don't even know what district I live in. But anyway, I went to vote. And I'm looking on the ticket. And I got it, you know, through here. Yeah. I got the names. I mean, I got you. I got Pat O'Brien. I got all these names. I come up. I look at this. I'm like, wait a second. And I tell my son, because he was, I mean, I'm visually impaired. Yeah. So I tell my son, I'm like, dude, this is these are the names we look for. And this is what we mark. And it's like, Dad, that name is not on the ballot. I'm like, come on, just look at it. What do you mean it's not on the ballot? The only person out of all of you guys that was on my ballot was Mark Kern. Yeah, there you go. That was the only person. And I'm like, oh, my God. But, yeah, it's it's important to live in the right district. So that's a problem. Okay, God bless. Well, thank yeah, you thank very, you very much. much. Yes, and once again, thank you for your service, and happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, guys. Take care. Oh. <laughs>